Welcome to another week, another show of Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. Pleased to be joining you, and thanks for tuning in. Got another great show lined up for you this week, and I know you'll think so after viewing it. Marvin McNutt. Yes, that Marvin McNutt. Iowa Hawkeye all-time leading receiver Marvin McNutt will be joining us here in just a moment. And then after that, our usual David Eicholt, Hawkeye Insider, will be joining us. And so excited about this show as we are every show. With that being said, I've located my buddy Joel Tice. Joel Tice is the owner and president of Tice Automotive Family. Joel, my friend, how's everything going with you this spring? Going well. The weather's nice and uh, people are out moving around, so it's good for us. Yeah, it really is. And I know you mentioned, too, a lot of uh, your customers are doing their shopping online and then coming in and making their deals. So business is great. Inventory, you're still scrambling to get that moving and shaking and get caught up. So a lot of positive things happening. We had the spring game with the Iowa Hawkeyes. So things happening and moving forward in the athletic world, but also with you in the car business. And we can't thank you enough for your support of this program, as always. And it's great seeing you and talking to you every couple weeks. So we look forward to seeing you and talking to you in the next two weeks, Joel. Yep, appreciate it very much, Dave. Uh, you're very welcome and thank you. He is Joel Tice, president and CEO of Tice Automotive Family. We'll be back with more Marvin McNutt, Iowa Hawkeye all-time leading receiver, and then Hawkeye insider David Eichel to close out the show. Back with more Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara, in just a moment. Hi, I'm Joel from Tice Chevrolet. We've lived through some very interesting times the last few months. Ensuring everyone's safety is more important than ever. That is why we're participating in the Chevy Clean program. At your request, we will pick up your vehicle, service it, and return it after we've cleaned it using the current CDC guidelines. This is just another way to work towards exceeding your expectations. So give us a call and let us show you what it means to be part of the Tice Automotive family. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. I'm pleased as you can see the guy on the screen joining me here, Marvin McNutt, Iowa Hawkeye all-time leading receiver. Marvin and I have done many interviews in the past uh, for a, a bowl view, viewing party show. We've been on radio together and now our first time on TV together. And Marvin, you've probably seen around the Cedar Rapids area on TV uh, on other shows. But Marvin is now the sports director at the CR Metro YMCA's. Again, Marvin, it is great to see you, my friend. How's everything going with you? And thanks for joining us. Man, it's going good. I'm blessed. I can't complain at all. Thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure as always. And, you know, I was telling you a story off the air, regaling you and what a story you had told me. And I want to share it with the listeners as you're smiling with me here. And uh, we had an appearance I had, or I had arranged a couple of years ago with former Cub great Bob Dernier and former Kansas City Royal great Willie Wilson. And you came to join us for a signing. So we thought we'd have a different a Royal, a Cub, and then a Hawkeye. And you came down to Burlington for a Burlington Bees game. And you warmed up. Uh, you said, hey, Dave, before we get started, you don't mind if I take a couple of cuts at the plate and take a couple of throws? And is there a mid around here? So, uh, and my two former major leaguers leaned over the fence and watched you play. And they were like, Dave, this guy may have played the wrong sport. So besides coming into Iowa as a left-handed quarterback, and then you ended being the Iowa all-time leading receiver, you were also a baseball guy. So I'm going to step out of the way and let you tell that story, please. Yeah, I, uh, so growing up, man, honestly, I was a first sport I fell in love with was baseball and basketball. Uh, I, I came up and watched my dad play softball and tell me stories about him playing against Bernard Gilkey and as a young kid. And then uh, I was a young kid going into the barbershop and would see Ozzie Smith come in all the time uh, and would just, you know, kind of be in awe at the wig, you know. And, and so baseball was a huge passion of mine. And so I played center, first base and outfield and almost got drafted uh, to go to play baseball even after I committed to the University of Iowa, as well as basketball was a really big, you know, big piece to my who I am. I mean, I was a nominated McDonald All-American uh, as, a, as a point guard for my AAU basketball team. So uh, when, it, when it comes down to sports, man, it felt like for me, you know, really any path I chose. I mean, I was four years old and told my mom that I'll be the first person to play all three major sports. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, I knew, I knew sports was which way I wanted to take it going out of high school. I love that. De Deion Sanders wasn't enough to get two. You needed all three. And, and the intriguing thing to that is, and again, you're from the St. Louis area and came to the Iowa Hawkeyes, and, but it wasn't that easy for you to get into football with your mom allowing that. So talk about that little exchange you had with your mom and the coach. I love that story too. Yeah, well, so I had asthma. And so my mom always felt that really I, was, I wasn't really the kid to play football. And so uh, actually during my freshman year in high school, I was out throwing the, like playing football on like the, the like our PE class. And mm -hmm. my, the high school football coach was my PE coach. And he saw me kind of moving around and killing the kids. And he kind of came to me and said, Hey, uh, 
you know, why aren't you playing football? He saw me throw a, like the kickoff through the uprights. And so I told him, you know, mom really doesn't want me to play. Well, uh, sure enough, he tells the baseball coach and the base uh, for or his offensive coordinator, who was the JV baseball coach at the time. And I moved up there at, at, and was playing for him during that week. And so he brought the football out to baseball practice and had me throw to a few of the guys that were going to be playing on the varsity team next year. And one of the guys was also the other quarterback. And he told me, hey, teach him how to throw a ball real quick. And I threw a few out and he looked at me and said, yeah, you're playing football next year. So then we get to the summer and one of my good, really good friends actually uh, had passed. And he took me you know, kind of his whole time. He said, hey, Marv, you know, you should go out and play. So with with his spirit and heart, really, I told myself, no, I'm, I'm playing football. And sure enough, that was what I went to college for. How funny how things work out. And, and boy, did it work out for you. Sixth round draft pick. And I know you put that on social media last week, the nine-year anniversary of you being drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles. And I want to get into that story in just a little bit. But before we get there, let's cover your time at the Iowa Hawkeyes. You come in as a left-handed quarterback, as we talked about. And I'll tell you, between your story, James Vandenberg, Tristan Wirfs, Ike Budker, all these former Hawkeyes we've had on this show have talked about you come in as one thing but then they have a, a path for you and the Hawkeyes do talk about your transition from quarterback into wide yeah. receiver and how successful that was for you man it was actually uh during my freshman year I, I bounced back from wide receiver and quarterback on the scout team a lot because we had another quarterback and we just need bodies that could actually do it so Tyler Sash and myself actually would play wide receiver and kind of dominate our defense during that year well uh we got to the year after, as it was kind of a quarterback battle between myself, Jay Christensen, and Rick Stanzi. And uh, me being the young guy in the room, we had, I think, probably one of the worst years as well off the field. So we lost probably, I think, three receivers um, to off the field incidents and really good ones at that. And so coach kind of looked around. We got um, Eric Campbell became our wide receivers coach. So one day we're at practice, kind of similar story, and I'm catching a football one-handed back from Rick and throwing it back. And he kind of comes and stares at me for a little bit, kind of looks me up and down. Uh, hey, big fella, uh, where are you from? I said, St. Louis. He kind of chopped, he kind of rubbed his face like, all right. Uh, he said, well, whenever you're ready to play some fo- make some money and play football, come talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> So sure, about two weeks later, I uh, we're in the middle of that Sean Green's year, and uh, I get a call come to the office thinking I'm in trouble, uh, like I did something wrong. And uh, for sure, they sat me down. I was like, "Hey, we're thinking about moving you to wide receiver. Uh, you know, what do you think about that? What, what, how do you feel?" And I was a little bit irritated at the time too because I was like, "You know, I still think the quarterback is what I can do." And uh, but at the same time, I my goal was like, "Hey, I I want to go play in the NFL." I I want to have an opportunity too to play with my brothers that are out here that I work with all the time. And I want to be here. So that was the thing I didn't want to transfer. And I said, uh, you know, so uh, I'll try it out. Well, luck, luck have it. It worked out. <laughs> Just a little bit. Again, Iowa, Iowa Hawkeye all-time leading receiver. But, you know, when you talk about making the transition uh, to that and, and having the mindset, the team-oriented mindset that you have uh, and from, you know, baseball to basketball to football. And we talked with Parker Hesse about this, and he said the same thing you said. And Ike Budker, it's always amazing to me when you former players talk about, yeah, I got called into the office and thought, uh-oh, what did I do wrong? I'm in trouble. And they're just like, no, no, we want to look at you at, at a position change and Man, did it work out for you. So let's talk about your career at Iowa. And, and again, playing, it's always the topic of the year, it seems like. Even if there's an incumbent quarterback coming back, we have a quarterback controversy or people want to try to stir that up with the, the spring practice, open spring practice last Saturday between Deuce Hogan, Alex Padilla, and of course, Spencer Petras. So my comment or questions to you is I talked to the, this about Jordan Kanziri last week, and uh, Jordan was just a little while after you, but you had the transition from Ricky Stanzi, and then Rick was injured, James Vandenberg, then Ricky came back, and then with James Vandenberg after Ricky left. Talk about that, not just changing positions from you know throwing the ball to catching the ball, but also c- coming from a different quarterback. Let's talk about that, if you don't mind, please. Yeah, it, it definitely is a different type of ball you get. You know, Rick, you know, had a little bit of a cuff the way he kind of came out of his hand, and so his spiral was a little different. Whereas James, you know, he he flicks it at you, and and, and it hits a little different. Um, and also just the the types of balls they throw, you know. Uh, James, man, he, he, I really think didn't get enough credit for how tight of a spiral and how well he threw the football. Um, he was so nice, but again, his his time kind of ended a little poorly just due to, I think, switching of the offensive coordinators. Uh, but again, 
you have a, the two different types of people that you have to get used to in a sense from going. But the one thing that me and James got early was we had a lot of time together because he was the backup quarterback during Rick's uh, tenure, you know, and, and I was the young guy in the group. So I would a lot of times still get work with James a lot. Um, and just the fact that for me, it, it didn't, I told myself it was coming from, man, I'm going to be in the spot that you need me to be. You just make sure you get it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So, so when you take a look at this and the success you had, the bowl games and all the different experiences at Iowa, and again, we talked to Jordan Kanziri about this last week, with the fans at Iowa and the great reception you get, and now you're back in the Cedar Rapids area with your wife and kids, and again, sports director at the Cedar Rapids YMCA or the Cedar Rapids Metro YMCAs. And I would ask you this. Talk to us, if you would, about your experience being drafted, what a thrill it was. Was. The NFL career didn't become what you wanted it to be, but you've been a former Arena League coach in Cedar Rapids. You've always kept your toe in the water in Eastern Iowa. So let's talk about you know your end of your career at Iowa, being drafted, and then now being in Cedar Rapids and all the things you've got going on. Still always in and around sports, Marvin. I love it. Honestly, we, it was one of those things when I when I came out as my senior year. Obviously, it's decorated senior season. Um, I, I came out thinking, you know, I no receiver really had done what I've done out of the University of Iowa. Uh, so I, I thought Bill's that draft process was going to be a lot easier in a sense. And and I am kind of looking back on it for me. Um, I'm a little bit upset at myself still on the on the topic of, you know, how hard did you really work at it when you were in that combine experience, when you were in the uh, not even after really more so after the combine, because I, I performed pretty well at the combine um, and, and really in that process, you, you still also are looking at yourself. Cause I honestly think I had got called from the Rams and right before the draft, I believe they're going to take me with their second, their first pick, which was the second, the first pick in the second round. Um, they ended up going with a guy that I played with in a senior bowl, Brian quick. And so part of it was you, you, you're going through this process and you're seeing all these different names with guys that you beat out in stats all year long. Uh, you see guys that you, you went up against, all year and have dominated uh, for four years uh, going in front of you. So for me, I was, I was angry a lot during my, my draft process uh, just because I'm thinking, you know, what are they seeing that I didn't do? Uh, I played in the big games. I played in the big conference. I dominated that conference. Uh, and so part of it, you know, I, I had other things in my mind that I was holding on to, but then at the same time, uh, once somebody, came, well, Hey, you know, we want you. Cause at the time I think, when I was getting called for my draft process, uh, I was waiting around and uh, hanging out with my, my one now wife in my room. And all of a sudden I get a call from uh, Chicago first. And so Chicago calls me and I'm thinking, okay, we're about to go to Chicago. What's happening? They call me like, hey, we're thinking about getting you with our next pick. Uh, we, we, we know the draft didn't go as well as you thought it was. Uh, but we also had you listed in the second and third round. So we know how sometimes these draft goes depending on what receivers or what teams need. Uh, but we'd like to take you with our next pick. And I'm thinking, oh, so wait, you haven't drafted me? Right in the middle of that call, I get a number from Pittsburgh. So I'm thinking it's the Pittsburgh Steelers calling me. And so I answer the phone and it's Greg Castillo's dad uh, calling me. Uh, it's like, hey, Marvin, uh, I got Coach Reed here with the Philadelphia Eagles. We want to talk to you for a minute. Mm -hmm. So sure enough, Coach Reed gets on the phone and uh, Coach Andy Reed, and he's like, hey, Marvin, you know, just want to let you know, uh, do, do you want to be a Philadelphia Eagle? And right in that moment, man, uh, all the emotions, all the chills, all the work that you put in, man, just came out and start crying and hugging my family. They hear it downstairs. They start running upstairs and hug me and different things. Uh, and it's one of the greatest feelings in the world that somebody wants you. Somebody wants you and believes in your ability to be on that football field. So uh, I'm forever grateful, again, for for that organization, for Coach Reed, uh, Coach Castillo, uh, all those coaches, Howie and everybody. Uh, although it didn't work out after that first year once Coach Kelly came in, at the end of the day, you just want an opportunity to show somebody you can you can do what, you, what they believe you can do. And again, it, it came out, man. I was able to play on the team, played in Carolina, played in Washington, played in Miami. So um, very blessed, man. And uh, now even with football, man, it's, 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 it's created a chapter in my life that I've always wanted to hold on to. And I feel like if my son, my nephew, like people around me, the kids that I work with ever get an opportunity to go to that level, uh, I'm always going to be a, a, a a source of information, a, a piece of them that's rooting for them more than anybody ever will, because I know how hard it is to get to that moment. 
Right. And I love the fact that you're still working with kids, and not just with the CR Metro YMCAs, but also, uh, if you saw at the bottom of the screen, viewers, uh, at the beginning of this segment, at the end of the segment, all of Marvin's contact information. Marvin still has camps for kids and trains kids, so check that out as well. But Marvin, in the last minute or two, I have with you for this segment and this week, and we're going to have you back as always, uh, as often as you, uh, you're available, because what a great story you have and stories. But give us your take on the Hawkeyes in the next minute or two uh, with how the wide receivers may be looking this year. we got some incoming freshmen like Keegan Johnson, Arlen Bruce IV, uh, the whole quarterback thing. How are you thinking the Hawks looking this year? First off, you know, Spencer, Spencer Petrus, man, is, is I think the guy. And people, you know, a lot of times get, get upset with, you know, how well they play in their first year and, and – and the different things, but no quarterback has ever had a year like Spencer Peters. Um, he had to go right away into Big Ten play, which normally there are a couple games to kind of get acclimated to the college football season. Um, so that's one of the hard things there. Secondly, um, he had a pretty good year of wins. And then when we talk about, you know, what you really want at the quarterback position, it's okay, are we ending the game with W? Um, and so, you know, other than that, I think that first off, he's going to have a much better and successful year. Than he had last year. Um, but I also believe that him and Tyrone Tracy are going to kind of maybe have a year the way I kind of had a year with James Vandenberg, where um, it, it's nobody's really thinking about him. But I've also reached out to Tracy and told him, I said, just so you know, I'm ex I feel like you're going to have a really explosive year. And I feel like you're going to be the guy that everybody's going to be looking at to say, OK, he's the next Big Ten first round receiver uh, just because you work hard. And, and that's what it's going to take. He said, man, I'm ready to work all summer. Um, so you, you tell me when you're, when you tell me you got time, I'm ready to work. And I told him, I said, I'll be there. Don't worry. Uh, so again, I think that room and having somebody like that in that room, um, elevates it because I know how it did when I was there. Uh, when I came and decided that I really wanted to be a receiver, I elevated that room. Me, I pushed DJK, I pushed Keenan Davis, I pushed all those guys around us to get better every day. Cause you know, we only have one moment to be great. So, uh, those guys, and I, I think this offense and those young guys will have a great leader in Tyrone Tracy in that room. And I think they'll have a good person to follow and how he works. But I think it's going to only elevate this offense and, and really push them to the level they want to see and succeed. It just starts again with those guys. I love to hear it. That is great optimism. And as we say our goodbyes to you here, congratulations to Amir Smith Marset, ISM, yes, sir. fifth round pick of the Minnesota Vikings. And yes, sir. we'll go through the rest of the draft with David Eichholz, our Hawkeye insider, in the next segment. But I know that had to make you feel good. I see a smile there, one of your fellow receivers. Did, man. Him, him and Brandon Smith, man, I, I, I see big things in their future. I think that both of those guys will 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 truly show the rest of the world what they missed out on sometimes by by not throwing the ball deep to them at times. Yeah. Marvin, it's, time goes so quickly. I greatly appreciate the amount of time you gave us today. I look forward to catching up with you in the future. He is Marvin McNutt, Iowa Hawkeye all-time leading receiver, now sports director for the CR Metro YMCAs, and I love it. There's Marvin's information on the bottom of the screen along with mine. Marvin, as always, thank you so much. Great seeing you. Great for talking sure. with you. We'll do it again soon. Great. And go Hawks, my friend. Go Hawks, guys. Thanks, Marvin. We'll be back with more Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara, in just a minute. His hands were hard and stained with dirt from breaking ground. He's the heartbeat of the heartland and everybody knows. If a ship ever comes, it's coming in. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. As you can see on the screen, my buddy David Eichel joining us. David, the Hawkeye Insider, all his information at the bottom of the screen along with mine. As you know, we record this show every Tuesday afternoon, airs on Friday night and online after the fact on Sunday thereafter. So all the time references we give uh, bear that in mind. So David, first and foremost, as always, thanks for joining us. Secondly, spring football game on Saturday, a lot happening in and around that. The NFL draft, 
I'm going to step out of the way and let you fill in the blanks. Let's start with spring football first, my friend. Yeah, I'll say this, Dave. It's very interesting trying to watch and evaluate a spring football practice while rounds four through seven of the NFL draft are going on <laughs> at the <laughs> same time. But first of all, what a beautiful day. Great turnout, I thought, at Kinnick Stadium. It was a little bit windy, but not a cloud in the sky. It was warm. Just a different overall vibe. It was fantastic, Dave. But, yeah, you know, I think the biggest thing I saw, you know, was just the two-week improvement. I mean, like I said, when you evaluate multiple spring football practices, what you really want to see is, okay, who's making progress from April 17th to, April, uh, to May 1st? And I think a number of Iowa players did that. And I think most importantly, Dave, Iowa's best players got better. And that's exactly what you want out of the springtime. Tyler Goodson, I thought, showed some nice explosiveness. Tyler Linderbaum is already looking poised to be the nation's best center again. Iowa secondary, I'll say this, keep an eye on Riley Moss. Riley Moss was arguably, I think, Iowa's best overall player in both of spring practices, multiple pass breakups, great athleticism, got an interception in each of those practices. So we're not even talking about Matt Hankins, who, you know, again, is a, is a four-year starter. So Iowa's secondary looking poised for a big season. And Iowa's defensive line, I think, continues to make strides. I wish we got the chance to see Yahweh Black, the big six foot six, 300 pounder who's going to start right defensive tackle, was out due to injury. But multiple guys stepped up, including redshirt freshman Lucas Van Ness and multiple others. The offensive line still has a little bit of work, Dave. But again, I think you can see the marketable improvement from the two week span. And we'll probably get to, we'll get to this eventually down the road too, Dave. But I will say, Iowa is looking poised to contend for a Big Ten West title yet again. And you know what I love about that? You mentioned all these things, and we didn't even get to the quarterbacks right away. So let's get there. You know, everybody, not everybody, but some of the naysayers want to talk about quarterback controversy. And I just talked to Marvin McNutt, former Hawkeye or former Hawkeye and all-time leading receiver at the University of Iowa, talked about Spencer Petras it being his job. James Vandenberg has said that. Everybody we've talked to has said that. So I'll ask you this. How did it look? And I know, again, we're so it's way early to be talking about this. We still have summer camp to go through before we get to the regular season drills and games. But how did it look? How did things look with Spencer Petras, Alex Padilla, and Deuce Hogan, the three quarterbacks? You know, I will say this, Dave, that it was a very windy day for the most part. So, I mean, you kind of have to take into account that a little bit. Petrus, I thought, started off sloppy. I think he got a lot better as the practice wore on. But I will say again, Dave, I, Alex Padilla was the best quarterback in both the open spring practices. Again, I see where Spencer Petrus' potential is, and I think he still has a lot to offer uh, this team. And I do think he will be the week one starter when Iowa hosts Indiana. But again, Alex Padilla continues to really, I don't want to say close the gap. Uh, Kirk Ferentz said he didn't want to use that reference, but he's getting in field consideration. So if you talk about quarterback room that will be pushing Spencer Petras to achieve that potential sooner rather, rather than later. That's exactly what you want to see. And I will say this. I know there's a lot of chatter about Deuce Hogan, the redshirt freshman out of Texas. I think Deuce Hogan's upside is, high, is higher than anybody who's in Iowa's quarterback room. But I think he's still a year away from seriously competing. I think he's continue to learn the playbook, continue to you know come, get better command of the offense, look more comfortable in the pocket. But he has a big arm. He's got intangible leadership qualities. Uh, so there's a lot to work with there. But again, I think he's a year away. So again, Spencer Peach will be a starter, but don't sleep on Alex Padilla. He may lack in size, but I think he has the tightest spiral on the team. And I think he did himself very proud during spring football. I like to hear that for this simple fact, as you mentioned, and Marvin McNutt just mentioned this in the segment before you, pushing other players, pushing other players to get better. And if that's the case, then so be it. But I would agree with you. I think going into that first week of the home game against Indiana, Iowa opening the season against the Big Ten opponent again before they get to the non-con and then back to the Big Ten games, I think it will be uh, intriguing to see where it goes from there if Petrus can keep the job or whatever happens, happens. So, David, then we'll talk about the circumstance or the pomp and circumstance that went around before uh, to the Iowa men's basketball team before the spring game or spring open spring practice started. And then, of course, the Iowa women, Bluters Bunch, were honored as well. So talk about that for us, if you would, for a few minutes, please. Yeah, I talked about a long-awaited overdue standing ovation for Luca Garza. I think he finally got that in Kinnick Stadium, had the opportunity to speak with the crowd a uh, very emotional speech, I thought, from him. Didn't tear up, but you could tell just how powerful his words were and how much the University of Iowa has meant to him. Great moment as he was presented with the Naismith Trophy. 
a great, again, a great turnout. The men's team was honored. I was pleased to see Connor McCaffrey is able to go. Remember, he just barely had his second surgery on his other torn hip labrum, and he was be able to be able to be out there, which I thought was fantastic. So, again, a long overdue moment for them. And then, as you mentioned, afterward, Bluters bunch. The, I was very pleased how many people stuck around after, and I love the fact that they honored each team separately. I know some people would have wanted them at the same time. But when you have two of the best players in the country, Caitlin Clark and Luca Garza, you got to give them their own platform. So, again, I thought that was a great move by Iowa. Well-deserved ovation for Bluter's Bunch. And Lisa Bluter, you talk about you, – you have to be energetic when you describe her. She's very passionate, very energetic, and you can tell that that group is just itching to get back into the gym and have a full Carver Hawkeye arena. And I will say I think that they're going to be near the tops in uh, attendance next year for women's basketball. No shortage of hype for that team. That's fantastic news. Let's talk NFL draft in the next minute and a half or two minutes that we have with you before he closes the segment out. Then the Hawkeyes in that draft this year. Let's talk about Chauncey Golson going in the third round, Dave. What a great pickup, I thought, for Dallas. I mean, Chauncey Golson, a four-year starter, I don't want to say it was overshadowed for most of his career, but when you look at guys like A.J. Epinesa, Anthony Nelson, Davion Nixon, uh, it's kind of hard to be the star when you have those guys in that bunch as well. But a great place for him. I'm not surprised to see him move up the draft board. I think he's going to have a really good opportunity there. Davion Nixon, you talk about a guy that's going to have a chip on his shoulder, was once a top 10 pick in January, slid into all the way to the fifth round, Dave. But I think he's going to have a fantastic opportunity with Carolina, and I think he will find a way to make an impact there. And Ymir Smith-Marset, again, you talk about a perfect situation for him going to Minnesota. Minnesota is looking for a third wide receiver to merge, and I think that's going to be a really good situation for him as well. And then, like, as you mentioned, uh, Nick Neiman going in the sixth round, very good for him. I think he did a lot to really improve his stock with Iowa's Pro Day. I think he has a chance to be a very good special teams player, much like his brother uh, Ben in Kansas City. So we'll, we'll see if he can, uh, can make a name for himself. But Iowa very well represent several other Hawkeyes, including – then Sean Beyer signing undrafted free agent contracts. And with Beyer signing that contract, Dave, I believe that's 21 straight starting tight ends. The University of Iowa has landed at least one NFL contract. That is unreal. And then Brandon Smith, uh, as we talked about off the air, Brandon Smith going with the Cowboys on a free agent deal. So Amir Smith, Marset in the fifth round of the Vikings. So all good stuff. David, as always, thank you so much. A lot of information packed into uh, your segment as always. So thanks so much for that. And we look forward to catching up with you next week. He's Hawkeye Insider David Eicholt. You see all his information at the bottom of the screen along with mine. David, my friend, thanks so much. We'll catch up with you next week. Hey, thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. My pleasure as always. And thank you. And thanks again uh, to Marvin McNutt, Iowa Hawkeye all-time leading receiver for joining me, as well as David Eicholt, Hawkeye Insider, and Joel Tice with Tice Automotive Family. Thanks to him as well. And thanks to you, the viewers, for tuning in and making us number one in late night on KFXA Fox 28. Also, stay tuned for the updates as to when and where we'll be going statewide with this show. Go to DaveOHaraSports.com for that. Please stay tuned for just a second after this show with the rolling credits uh, and give the respect and attention and, and your business when possible to the advertisers and sponsors on this show. For Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara, that's all from me. Thanks to all of you.